Jai Jagannath. We have a very special guest with us today. He is Dr. Piyush Roy. Dr. Piyush Roy is an Indian critic, columnist, author, curator and filmmaker. He has a deep connect and bonding with our steel city since he was born and brought up in Rorkela. He has made a critically acclaimed documentary, Pleasures, Prejudice, Pride, an Indian way of filmmaking. The film was the focus of a multi-city global screening tour across leading universities in the UK last year. He was honored with special mention for best critic at the 60th Indian National Film Awards by the President of India. He had the privilege of being invited by Queen Elizabeth II and the Duke of Edinburgh to the UK-India Year of Culture's official inauguration at the Buckingham Palace in 2017. Wow, Dr. Piyush, welcome to RSTV. It's really pleasure and pride, but no prejudice <laughs> to have you here. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. And, uh, and thank you for those kind words. I just, it was just like a little nostalgia trip of nice, pleasurable memories. I know, I know. So, uh, let's start with this uh, documentary which has won so much of acclaim. So, uh, could you tell us something about the film, about this documentary? So, uh, I'll go with the second part of the title, an Indian way of filmmaking. Yes. And that in essence is what the documentary is all about. Is there an Indian way of filmmaking? Because we see the Hollywood style, the European style, nowadays the Korean style which uh, young people are a big fan of, the Japanese and Iranian style is again minimalistic, realistic. So, uh, th there were a couple of very fundamental questions whenever I have interacted uh, with a more uh, eclectic audience or a, they always ask why do Indian films don't uh, sing and dance so much? You know why there is such so many transition of emotions? It's not nothing is linear. You know you have a uh, if I reference from a very popular film like Shole, um, you have a scene where everybody is singing and dancing. Mm. It cuts to something of extreme violence where at the end of which a little kid is killed. Yeah, and then it cuts to something else. This kind of acts as a um, like a, what you can say it discomforts. So, uh, certain linear ways of storytelling, this whole masala and all those. So these were all little, little questions that had picked up in, in reviews, in criticisms. I remember one of a very eminent critique had dismissed the entire body of work of N.T. Ramaro as a painted face. Mm -hmm. So then, I mean, these things always puzzled me because I always thought that, no, there is something about the way we emote that maybe people are not getting it. Mm -hmm. That's how the journey began and this was my PhD quest also. My research question was yeah. how to appreciate this thing, how to make a sense of this thing in a way that uh, where we look at cinema beyond the narrow divisions of art uh, like parallel, commercial and all that to see if it is a good work of art or not. So, so that's how it began and then one after other as I talked to these people the layers opened about the various uh, uh, ideas around, is there an Indian way of filmmaking? Mm. And uh, to sum it up in a line, I would say, the filmmaking or the representation of art is something that comes from the culture in where it is made. Absolutely, yeah. And the culture is actually a product of a tradition and the tradition comes from a civilization. And as since you have seen the film, there is that quote of Siddharth Kak. Yeah. You know, it, there cannot be an Indian way of filmmaking, it, then there wouldn't be India. It is such a <laughs> puzzling quote. But if yeah. you uh, think about it, it is because we are a distinct civilization and whatever we create as our best form of expression finds a very distinct signature of us in it. Would you say that uh, all films made in India are different from the films made elsewhere? Because I think all of them have that kind of, uh, you know, song, dance, routine, comedy, a lot of masala. So that is why, uh, the reason is because Indian culture is very similar to that extent. Go a little back. Yeah. You know, then uh, we have the Natya Ved. Mm. So are the, there are the four Vedas and there is the Natya Ved. And the Natya Ved apparently takes the best uh, inspirations from the four Vedas. Yeah. 
and there there is a beginning uh, the story goes like bharat muni the sage bharat or the the creator of natya shastra when he creates the first play to be performed before the gods and brahma gives his blessings and he performs and all everything is fine but then brahma says that something is missing in it you know he says like it is good it is giving the message and all that but uh, it would be much more powerful and engaging and entertaining if we have some song and dance in it and uh, so you have to go to lord shiva for that because he is the ultimate in both the tandav and the last year the graceful as well as the aggressive form and then bharat muni goes to uh, lord shiva and then shiva then uh, teaches this and then we have the gandharvas are created the musicians right. and the apsaras are created the dancers Dance, yeah. and from a simple play it becomes a complete play so this tradition of song and dance goes back that many i mean uh, this is broadly the gist of the narrative but it can be having a little bit of uh, pluses and minuses mm-hmm. to it and the first drama that is performed at the devaloka is called amrit manthan mm-hmm. so that's the tradition so it is there it is always been there and we as a race i mean and we as a uh, experience also like there is music in uh, everything and so it is not something Uh, which is alien to us i mean come to think of it i think the national sport of india is antakshari <laughs> this is one game that everybody <laughs> takes everybody part with irrespective of age irrespective of uh, place you mm. know train mein ikatthe ho jate log to antakshari shuru ho jati hai it conducts any uh, time is antakshari yes time. and connects uh, random unknown people together and so this is there i mean we are a very oral Uh, you know i mean the vedas came for thousands of years mm-hmm. before they were actually codified they were verbally transmitted the epics were verbally transmitted so we are a very oral uh, civilization that way so it has to be that uh, you know song and dance and performance correct this would come uh, natural to the way we express <laughs> true because i remember in that movie uh, somebody uh, was mentioning that uh, if you see our normal life uh we just seem to be waiting for an opportunity to sing and dance and celebrate so it's like a normal uh, routine for us yeah. and that is reflected in the cinema so i mean why such a un cry about it we are just living it right and as om puri says and it needs guts to say that he and he was one of the poster actors of the art cinema the movement of the 70s. 70s he says i never understood why our filmmaker shun from this in the 70s yeah and that is where i think the great moment of the burst of artistic or art house cinema took a beating when they kind of decided to position themselves as being of song and dance we will not do song and dance mm-hmm. and they were following a certain pattern uh maybe the european uh, style of realism and realism, all that true. but the thing is this is not who we are i mean you cannot not have these elements and mm-hmm. i think that's why that movement kind kind of died down and today as it is revived as this indie cinema mm-hmm. in films like badai ho bala and all these are full of songs and uh, musical references and see the other thing is the song played a very important narrative tool they were always a music scene the situation progressed through that they were not inserts or items then it is people don't connect with it people mm-hmm. go out to take uh, buy their popcorn or something yeah, like yeah. that but us pehle kya hota tha ki wo music scene se narrative move karta tha simple sa ex- example deta hu ki uh, do ladka ladki mile unme pyar hua and ye uh, unki pyar uh, pyar badha unka now imagine that you will need 10 written scenes to identify that they are coming meeting again and this you through one song in five yeah minutes. the all the phases yes uh, can be exemplified here yeah. it's a great editing tool true it's a great yeah the, i never thought of this <laughs> but true uh, whether it's uh, uh, in terms of phases of love or passage of time mm. it's uh, terrific yeah so you've done a humongous amount of uh, research you know i was completely uh, flummoxed and uh, you know just thinking that the kind of effort that would have gone and how you collected all those shots and all that so uh, what was the greatest challenge in making this film see it has happened over a span of 3 to 4 years because that research takes time like if i have to represent so i would uh, it won't be wrong to say that this is perhaps the first indian documentary that sings in most of the indian official languages, languages ten, yeah 10 plus easily 
Now, how do I do justice to that? How do exactly. I pick up like, exactly. you know, uh, the, because you are chartering a very difficult ground because mm -hmm. you will say, Achha, ye humare sabse achche movies hai, apne sab kyun nahi still I have missed out Mughal-e-Azam. <laughs> <laughs> Many people say that you don't have Mughal-e-Azam. Mughal yeah. But yeah. really, you can't do, you can't uh, pick so, and see every film. Then I, then I thought like, you know, that insert of Mother India was done very late because I said, Mother India kaise miss kar jai? You know, mm -hmm. this is our first film that yeah. went for Oscars, Oscars and also we have a little sequence of that but uh, n not featuring Nargis but uh, set up of Mm. Uh, the establishment. So uh, it was like, okay, now if I am looking at Malayalam cinema, which films do I pick? So my first step was to look at the uh, list of national awards, all the best film winners, mm. because that's kind of a, perhaps the best place to go to get a representative selection of the best mm. in every year. And because the competition is across the uh, across India, it's just not limited to one cinema. So like that, like Chamin is there because Chamin was the first South Indian film to get uh, the national award for best film. Mm -hmm. Like Maya Bazaar, Rajamoli, uh, when I was talking to him, the director of Bahubali, he said that everybody swears by that film. And I think I had also shared with this, mm -hmm. he seemed much more excited talking about Maya, Maya Bazaar. Bazaar than any <laughs> other film. <laughs> that is, that is <laughs> film. So like that, so my idea was that if I, I shouldn't be just going and picking any mm -hmm. uh, film, but still like for example, uh, in uh, Marathi film, I have used uh, Kung Ku. Uh, v Shantaram and Shantaram is again uh, one of the great um, uh, you know the original uh, directors who knew this masala form very well mm -hmm. it's not credited to him like once Tom Alter had said one of the four great truly you know uh, global what he thought from the commercial space where V Shantaram uh, then um, Raj Kapoor and uh, Manoj Kumar and Shubhas Gai who understood that how to use song and dance very well. Correct. So they were he kind of and, and their their pictures are larger than life, very colorful. Mm. Like you might say why Bimal Roy is not there. Bimal Roy is also in that league, but Bimal Roy is slightly more un, uh, understated. Uh, understated yeah. So that kind of a thing. From a purely commercial point of view, mm. these are these are people who have given consistent blockbuster like a great form of the celebration of that masala uh, art. So this was my research and the other thing was then to find out who are the great directors in each language. So like in Bengali cinema, you see a clip of Ritwik Ghatak, Ghatak, you see Satyajit Ray. Because you, and they are two totally poles apart. Ghatak was the king of melodrama, mm. Ray, Ray was the king of minimalism. Mm. But the, the Bengali cinema would not be complete without either of them. True, absolutely. And then I come to Srijit who is one of the most prolific filmmakers today and also one of the most influential. So like that when I uh, say went to Kannada cinema, my the other point was uh, like when doing my research for my PhD, I looked at some of the doc most of the documentaries that were on Indian cinema, they're predominantly Hindi cinema centric. And you have great references, very deserving references to works of Mr. Bachchan, Dilip Saab and all. But <laughs> this is a film where you see them you also see Uttam Kumar, you also see NTR, you also see Sivaji Ganeshan, Mohan Lal, Raj Kumar from Kannada cinema. So that was my idea to tell people that yes, there are great actors in Hindi cinema, but there are equally great actors mm. in all other cinema. Let us start exploring. Even if somebody is curious enough from the clips to just go and investigate about this actor, about this director and this film, that they saw a clip and got intrigued by. I think that would be the greatest reward for this film because this is just a trigger. It, the film is an abstract to channel you in the direction of further study. <laughs> in fact, I just wanted to ask you this, you know, because I think this possibly is uh, one of those rare documentaries which is not so hugely Bollywood centric. Like you, like I think you have quoted a lady saying that you know it's only twenty five percent is Bollywood, yes, and the rest is uh, the yeah. other languages. Yeah. And doing justice to Bollywood and to the other languages, I mean, I should say hats off to you. Thank you, but yes, that is a fact, and I think the box office of twenty eighteen shows that Bollywood has kind of slightly slipped down to the number two position. Now, Hollywood in terms of numbers, in terms of box office returns and revenues and the number of films made, mm -hmm. Hollywood or the cinema from Telugu and Tamil cinema right now, the number one in terms of the mm -hmm. box office earnings and all. Mm -hmm. and Bahubali played a major role, but now films like uh, Pan India people are watching films like Rangasthalam mm -hmm. and you know all these. So it is. <laughs> mm -hmm.
See, one thing always pains me as a student, uh, admirer of uh, cinema, that we've had such great uh, filmmakers, but except for, say, Satyajit Rai and a couple of others, nobody has got his due. I mean, I think uh, Pyasa did get, of course, but Guru Dutt or Bhimal Roy or even Rajkumar Hirani, they have made such uh, fantastic movies, timeless movies. Why, why is it that we get a step-motherly or step-brotherly treatment as far as world cinema is concerned? Is uh, it lack of marketing, lack of exposure? Know, there are two things to yeah. One is as Mark Cousins, the eminent critic and filmmaker, and he comes from a huge authority when he says that because he's made story of film which decade by decade looks at what is happening at cinemas across the world. Mm -hmm. So when he says that there has been a deliberate ignorance of the West, I mean when he categorically says that the big festival directors don't know about the works of, the works, not just one film, the uh, works of say Raj Kapoor and uh, Guru Dutt and Mani Ratnam and people like that. So there is an ignorance to that and the other part which is kind of highlighted in my film as well, a lot has to do also with our anglicized critiques who see cinema from a very realism, European cinema centric, European prism, uh, prism where they are looking at minimalism, where they are looking at uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, authenticity and other things. But and somehow that school of criticism has played down melodrama. They have called it theatrical, they have called it exaggerated and all that and as I previously mentioned, like when people dismiss an entire body of work of N.T. Ramarao as a painted face or a, but look at uh, basically the reference was to all his mythological films because that made NTR what he eventually become. But that is us, I mean that is a style of cinema unless and until we acknowledge that. And the other thing is we have to stop comparing um, uh, wrong movies in one uh, box. I think that's very, very uh, critical. Yeah, I mean, we can't judge a badhai ho on the same parameters as a houseful four. <laughs> now, houseful four, it may be good, bad or whatever. It has to be compared with other film in its genre, like David Dhawan. You know, and go back to other comedies before that, like Padosan. Yeah, Manmohan Desai or whatever. So, yeah. it is wrong to compare hmm. Amar Akbar Anthony with Ankur. True. Nobody does that in world cinema. Hmm. Nobody, none of the critics do there because hmm. you won't, uh, you can't compare Lord of the Rings and Sindler's List on one bucket. They are totally different uh, narratives. But in here, we want to judge these films on those parameters. And we have to be, stop being apologetic that being colourful, being loud and all these things is problematic or drama because as one of the interview in the f uh, film rightly raises the question, how do you define ki this is the right amount of pathos or this yeah, is or the uh, loudness exactly or the pitch and all that matlab itna hi roenge to ye natural hai. As, a, as a culture, as a race we are very exactly. emotional mm. so we cry, we laugh, we jump around so what's wrong with it? Do we have to be stoic like the <laughs> Germans or anybody else? Yeah. And be apologetic that we are not stoic. Exactly. I mean, uh, even in Europe, you go to Spain and all that, totally. Yeah, and, and I love Spanish movies because they're so much like, you know, one of my favorite directors uh, is uh, Pedro Almodovar. His films are so colorful, and the characters are so loud. I think he, to, like, he should have been in Bollywood. Mm. Even Tarantino, if you look at Tarantino that films, is he is, I think, one of the best uh, masala filmmaker in Hollywood today. Mm -hmm. Look at the, uh, the, the splash of colors that he goes was about and this is what people like Nagi Reddy and all used to do. Now why I tell them that uh, you know I will give you one little example there is this scene in this film called Kurma Avatar uh, from Giris Kasaraval is one of his uh, recent films. So there this character they have taken him to play the role of Gandhi and there is a scene where Kasturba has died and he's as Gandhi he has to portray that emotion. And he cries and the director, the most of the people who are directing are young people, they have grown up on the European diet and uh, Western diet of films and they tell him, no, you don't need to cry You know, Ben Kingsley in Gandhi picture, they just one trickle of one tear trickle, yes. came from his left eye or something like mm -hmm. that, you do that. He said, no, I mean, 
uh, because he in real life he's lost his wife. He said Gandhi was married uh, when they were kids yeah. with somebody you have go grown 60, 70 years of life of your life together. You're not going to count how many one tier or two tier <laughs> I am dropping. That is not how it is because we have stopped feeling and acting. We are aping and acting. Mm. That is good. Let's do like that. But you know, some then we actually this kind of thing is uh, unreal in a way. You know, कभी हम किसी से भी मिलते हैं, we do all this thing ना कि चलो यार गाना गा दो, कुछ शुरू करो. Nobody goes and says that. You won't say that to a, a person you meet in uh, Europe and all. You know, the, and another anecdote here I remember during a part of my interview, I was interviewing um, Mr. Samar Nakhate from FTII, and I was asking him about melodrama and all that those questions. He said, yeah, yeah, we will talk about it. And we were walking down the campus pathway and then the another gentleman comes and says, Are sir, aap kahan gayab ho gaya, aap to bade admi ho gaya, bhool gaya, dikhte hi nahi ho and all that. And, and he patted him and they had a little conversation and then they walked further. And he told me, you know, I met him two days back. <laughs> See, performance is the way we meet each other. I mean, that is us. That is not melodrama. We have to stop thinking that this subtle measured way is us because the more and more we start being that we will be unhappy within because that is not us we are constantly curbing ourselves to being somebody who supposedly uh, because of the white canons is supposed to be good or all that but that's not us and i think it is changing we, we are in a period when decolonization of curriculum is a big thing mm -hmm. where uh, uh, in in the uh, universities in uh, UK at least where I uh, do often go and interact with faculty this is a big question now see earlier what happened uh, the colonizers came to the colonial world as somebody they had ruled and left but today they are, have to deal them with as equals and partners and when they do that you have to understand the psyche you cannot Philip Kotler cannot explain to you how in India a merchant trusts his client for full one month and gives him stuff knowing that oh, he will get the money only at the end of at the end month. Of the month. No, no Philip Kotler can explain mm -hmm. you that. <laughs> I would like to make a slight uh, digression here. Sure. The point which you mentioned about uh, films and all, it's the same to do with the stories in uh, mm -hmm. Indian literature or even English uh, yeah. writing. We are always judged from the prism mm -hmm. of Harry Potter and company. Yes. You know? And uh, there, there is a movement now that anything, any value is didactic, mm -hmm. it's preachy, it's moralistic, so there should not be any value. Mm -hmm. Now, I write stories which are a combination of entertainment and value. And I say that if it's only entertainment, you've got so many gadgets, no? Mm -hmm. But a story needs to entertain definitely, mm -hmm. to provide a hook, but at the same time, there should be a value subtly mm -hmm. tucked in, mm -hmm. so that the child, when he or she reads, Mm. They internalize, imbibe the value, you know, it mm. need not be thrust. But not having a value because West feels that it is preachy and moralistic mm. is stupid. So it is the same uh, colonial mindset I think we still mm. suffer from, where everything West is uh, <laughs> right yeah. and everything East is somewhat. <laughs> yeah, and, and as the Natya Shastra says, entertainment without enlightenment is meaningless. As, exactly. a, as the point which you were saying, I was thinking about this mm -hmm. and that's so true because see that's why even in our great filmmakers, unko censors board ki zarurat nahi thi. they used to do self-censorship themselves. Exactly. You know, pe people like Bimal Roy and all the kind of issues they raised, even I would say the aesthetic uh, sensitivities of Raj Kapoor haven't been understood well. They need to be, his reference of what we call eroticism was more the temple art. Mm -hmm. It was not your, uh, the, what mm -hmm. center spreads of Vogue and all those yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, he was, he celebrated the Indian form that way. So, th we need that. But again, as Macaulay and Minute, <laughs> and we are, I think it's high time we come out of the influence of that. Uh, where he had dismissed the entire wisdom of the East, not just India, the East, not even a shelf of, I guess, any mm -hmm. Western library. But we need to, and we need to assert in a positive way, uh, we need people to come and talk about it. Tell them that there are alternate views of looking at life and there is just no one way. And True. because the life is not like that. <laughs> no? uh, Dr. Piyush, uh, moving on to the second film of yours. Mm -hmm. You are now making a film on the Jagannath Consciousness. So could you share with our viewers 
something about the film. Right, as a Oriya and uh, Jagannath consciousness is something that uh, we literally grow up. You before even you realize. You know the the omnipotent presence of the Lord is manifested in so many ways. True, true. I mean, He is a Lord who uh, every Oriya household will have Him in that uh, puja ghar, mm -hmm. and they will have them in the drawing room and maybe in the study room. So you true. know, like, and uh, but what I have uh, uh, the idea to make a film actually came around the Nabakalibara because it was the largest human gathering of people at one place in the 21st century, the first largest the human first gathering. Century. So that's a big moment because at, at the end of it, cinema is spectacular and that attracts you. You need a big hook, especially when you're doing something like documentary, which is still has to find its own fans mm. uh, in our country the, as a genre. So uh, that spectacle awed me. And at that time, a lot of stories started coming, a lot of articles about Nabokalibara, what happens and all. And then some uh, beautiful works have come on that also. Like I think Nila Pandas, God's Own uh, uh, People, yeah. which was our opening film at the Edinburgh Festival Indian Film and Documentaries when I was the festival director there. We decided to have it as opening film. It was very well received. And so some other films, all these films, however, kind of look at that big spectacle moment or big event. But I think uh, there is much more. Even I was attracted by that hook. But when I started talking to people, so many things unraveled because this is just the focal, uh, could be the focal point. Mm -hmm. But there is so much happening behind. And there are legends, there are stories. You know, the whole uh, culture of the Devadasi system, Gita Govinda being performed in the temple premises. The fact that a temple, the structure of the temple, there is a Bhoga Mandap and an Atta Mandap, mm -hmm. apart from the Garbha Griya. So, you know, food, music is such an integral part of worship. And then that we, if we slightly use the today's lingo, you know, it can be fun. Going to the temple can be fun. Because te temples or Mukti Mandap, all these places at one point of time were the huge places of debate, art, culture. And you know, but somehow we are uh, regimenting them into places of uh, ritualism, rituals, yeah. rituals and, uh, and sometimes restrictions. Which mm. was And I think Jagannath consciousness blooms with this idea of universal brotherhood. And, and, and I mean, imagine that some of the most popular bhajans of the Lord are have been composed by a Muslim saint uh, poet. Baksal Beg. Right, and then you have had people from uh, every century coming. Uh, you talk about any great seer, uh, from Guru Nanak to Tulsi Das. Tulsi Das. Exactly. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Some, everybody has come. Everybody. And all, all castes, all creeds, all schools of thought, all yeah. religions. Right, right. Everybody is a bhakta of uh, the Lord. And I thought these are the things that need to be told around. Uh, the story of the Puri Shrine. And also, I guess that is one of the most uh, identifiable big shrines, and of, uh, it's part of our Char Dham also mm -hmm. in the Vaishnav consciousness. So, all these uh, ideas. So, and then I went on uh, the, the best part of the documentary is you never know what you will get. Mm -hmm. It gives you a good uh, opportunity to meet very interesting people like it was because of the film that I happened to meet you <laughs> and then again like just talking to you talking to my other interview is so much you get to learn and I just want to share that learning uh, so as and when the movie will come out uh, hopefully before the next Rathyatra that is the uh, target yeah but yeah that, that's that was the idea to look at God as Somebody who can inspire, apart from faith, and tremendous amount of faith, uh, to food, to fashion, fashion music, dance, theatre. I mean, he changes his costumes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so many sunabesa and other Sunabisa, things are yeah. there. So, like, I wanted to make uh, look at these aspects. So, you have called it uh, Monarch of the Blue Mountain. So, what is the USP of the film, according to you? It is the monarch. <laughs> of the, I think when uh, if Jagannath is there, I don't think you need any other, any other <laughs> USP. <laughs> I mean, his eyes have been drawing people from all over the globe yeah. for centuries, and I think he will uh, only take the movie forward. But how how would you? I mean, but I'll I'll just to add why I use the term monarch because in our con Oriya consciousness, he is the ruler. 
you know this is uh, uh, this is lord vishnu or lord jagannath in the form of you know like a householder like a he is not a recluse he loves the good things in life and he lives like a monarch like a king so that was the thing. A, a human king exactly jiyanta <laughs> thakur yes yeah. that's that's very nice uh, i have uh, while talking to you you had mentioned that you're also uh, teaching in a few management institutions mm -hmm. and foreign universities about uh, cinema and culture so could you tell us about this experience of yours yeah i i have been uh, teaching uh, faculty at i was at um, jain university i was an associate professor we were uh, working uh, towards uh, developing a school for liberal education mm -hmm. so that's kind of done in a good way i mean i was part of the faculty recruitment and other things so that kind of uh, is set in place so so then it was time for me to move on to something else but i do take uh, off late i have been actually surprisingly teaching more at management institutions mm -hmm. so i was at medas uh, pune uh, so i did uh, do a module on creative writing and all with them and i have some very interesting anecdotes there because it's a predominantly entrepreneurship management driven school and they kind of decide to always pick me this is the like the biggest challenge you can have mm -hmm. so to you go and you have this management students and you tell them i'm going to teach you creative writing how to write poetry and all those things <laughs> and they look at me they look at the person who is introducing me who why <laughs> why are we <laughs> we are management people why are we doing all this yeah. but i think this is where we need the most i mean harvard yale all the big management schools and all i this uh, the creative side of thing is what uh, is, has been lacking and what i may think is the big difference that uh, maybe in premier between premier institutes and other institutes in management that you know like uh, when i do this creative writing modules and all i i'll share one anecdote so i had a student who was always sitting on the first row with a very grumpy face like why am i being subjected to this torture <laughs> for 2 3 days he went on like this i said you just surrender to the processes because i make it very interactive i don't believe in the traditional style of teaching i break classes with music interruptions and ask them to shut up the mobile i try to experiment be doing mon vrat and all that mm -hmm. so i try to make it intriguing like if you tell them okay i am throwing a new challenge then they kind of come in and once they come in what happened at the end of the 15 because and i generally prefer to take continuous intense uh, classes so that they grow over the time you can't have this uh, break you know aaj ek lecture kiya fir panch din baad waise nahi continuous at the end of the whole session the whole module it was a full elective this kid not only composed his own piece of poetry he narrated it recorded it presented it uh, on a assignment of essay film making where they have to tell something about themselves and won the first prize and now he tells me after that I, and he hasn't stopped writing poetry mm -hmm. and he tells me like but this has helped a lot in like my girlfriend is very impressed <laughs> that i am writing poetry to <laughs> her <laughs> i am composing not quoting somebody else mm -hmm. so this is what i mean we all see if if you really think about what do we do in our free time we are all running back to the arts Absolutely. you know we going to whether we are consuming it on a youtube or an online platform or a cinema platform or a television but and i think nowadays it is much more an integral part of daily life like everybody i think must be spending at least a minimum hour to two hours every day with this medium Absolutely. so we sh we should realize that and once we realize that then we will realize how these mediums can be used to convey our own messages in whatever calling we are in like for this medas is primarily grooms entrepreneurs mm -hmm. so they have to so if you have to convey a message you have to understand the people and how best to understand the people like uh, as siddharth kak says because it's very important to know what films work because it tells you what people are liking a good film a successful film tells you it is a you know you can do a 100 audience surveys and you can try to understand why this particular film worked and what works with it and that could give you a good cue about what kind of characters people are loving to see like of the recent last 2 3 years in the, especially in the hindi cinema space you see lot of incomplete characters being loved and accepted like bala is about somebody who doesn't have hair mm -hmm. uh, subhmangal sabdhan was about some other uh, like 
uh, other issues. They, they're not, they are not complete heroes anymore. You know, they, there was a time when the hero had to look handsome. Yeah. And look at the four major poster boys of Indian cinema today or men. Rajkumar Rao, Ayushman Khurana, yeah. uh, Nawazuddin Siddiqui and Irfan Khan. All of them are hardly <laughs> exactly <impeccably> <laughs> handsome. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, so that's there. And when, when I do, uh, I do a lot of film appreciation courses. And again, there my whole idea is to tell people that, you know, we have, film criticism doesn't mean to criticize. Somehow we have come to that aspect mm. because I believe even you should develop a sense that even in the worst film there is something nice because in his mind the filmmaker is making a Taj Mahal. So he mm. must be doing something. You please find fault but also try to find what is nice in it. That's I think something. That, that's very important and it's not, it's not only true for films, it's also true for Every other aspects art, of life. Yeah. Yeah. Other aspects of life also. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, because then our whole worldview will change. Oh, yes. So, and that's why I call my film criticism modules film appreciation. Because that is what it was meant to be anyways. Like as Om Puri says in the film, that critic's job is to tell what is good and bad and tell how the bad could be better. Nobody does that. You no know, great critics in the West like Robert, Roger Ebert and all. Filmmakers used to follow them. If you would say this is bad editing, you would suggest like this is what you could have done. True. That's constructive, no? Exactly. It's very easy to say ki ye yeah, yeah. Hai, par to fir batao na acha kya ho sakta exactly. hai. See, because the advantage that a critic has is he is seeing hundred films. The filmmaker is not. Jab, because I understand as a filmmaker, when I am getting immersed, I am watching my movies hundred times. So I am kind of, I might be blinkered of other world views. True, true. And I don't have the time to watch. Yeah, and also there is a certain kind of uh, almost a narcissistic involvement, no? Yeah. Like I am writing a story from my point of view. Mm. For me, that's the best. Exactly. It's, it's yeah. like my child. Yeah. yeah. So, so I need the other view. Exactly. And that's what criticism should be. It's not like... Uh, you know the summary of the story and 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 especially in a country like india and in indian cinema where music is such an integral part we hardly have any music critics you know like True. none of the reviews mm -hmm. say anything about the music the lyrics of a film like for example uh, one of the recent films uh, kabir singh had deeply polarized the audiences people either love it I or hate it, it yeah. But the music is fantastic. It's, I think, one the best album of the year. So, you know, that needs its own independent review. We don't talk about that. It's always colored with the other things. Exactly. And how did the actor perform and that kind of a stuff. So, so let's play a small game. Sure. <laughs> so, I'll be telling you a, a particular word. And you should tell me which word comes to your mind. Top of the mind recall. Okay. For instance, uh, let me say Raj Kapoor. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Mira Nam Joker. Yeah. Uh, you, it can be an adjective or a yeah, noun, yeah. whatever. Uh, then I say religion. Religion, uh, hope. Great. Lord Jagannath. Everything. Oh, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. Then uh, finally, Dr. Piyush Roy. Uh, that's difficult, actually. Let me tell. <laughs> yeah, you do that. Storyteller. Thank you. Yes, I think that's that's a good yeah, summary. I, uh, whatever viewers, whatever I've conversed with him and gone through the film, I think he's a impeccable storyteller with a lot of involvement, a lot of love and a lot of concern for the audience. So, Dr. Piyush, it was lovely meeting you. Thank you. And hopefully next time you come with another documentary, which we can discuss with our viewers. Thank you. Jai Jagannath. Jai Jagannath.